Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. And if you're new, hi, my name is Anna. And in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you guys the 11 things that you must know before attending cosmetology school. I graduated from Paul Mitchell, the school in Michigan in 2019. And so I am a licensed cosmetologist and these are the things that I think you have to know before attending school. I'm sure as you already know, if you clicked on this video, what cosmetology is, but for those of you who might not know or are just interested in learning, it is the focus and study of nails, skincare, hair, and makeup. Number one is that it's not as simple as just hair, skincare, nails, and makeup. When you're studying cosmetology, it is professional ethics, human anatomy, and then you'll dive in deeper and go into, you know, perming hair, chemical relaxers, hair coloring, cutting, manicures, pedicures, sanitation. Sanitation is a big part of cosmetology school because no matter what you do in the realm of makeup and hair and skin, you will want to be sanitary. Number two is that if you like skincare, maybe try esthetician school first. So what I didn't know when I started cosmetology school is that in cosmetology school, there is a big, big focus on hair and you kind of just cover the basics of skincare, nails, and makeup. Now I took an extra 100 hours in makeup. So sometimes schools do offer, you know, extra classes, extra hours towards your license to get more schooling. However, you're just skimming the surface of skincare. And yes, different schools are different than other schools. Like my school was a very hair forward, hair based school. And there are others in Michigan in that do more spa like services and do more skincare type stuff and that kind of is another point but this one is that if you love skincare or let's say you love nails maybe go that direction first like if you don't think you want to do hair i would say do not go to cosmetology school because there is so much when it comes to hair that you're learning there's a whole nother thing for skincare that you can do that like esthetician school there's a whole like nail technician license so cosmetology is very in-depth about hair so the point is that if you like skincare the best i would say try esthetician school first if you like nails try to get your nail license first and see what you can do with those before you go through the year of cosmetology school so these all kind of intertwine together but number three is that esthetician school and cosmetology school are different like i already mentioned Cosmetology school has a large focus on hair and esthetician school has a large focus on skincare. Esthetician school brings you through facials, massages, maybe reflexology, makeup, whereas cosmetology, like I already said, covers skincare, nail care, makeup, and hair. Number three is that different schools focus on different things. I had no idea about this until I was already in school because I asked, I said, why aren't we doing more facials and more skincare and stuff? And they said, well, Paul Mitchell is a more hair based school. I thought, oh, I didn't even realize that there were other schools that are more skincare based, but there's other schools that are more spa like and skincare focused and then obviously they do teach you hair in cosmetology school but that's more of their aesthetic whereas Paul Mitchell's like thing is hair. Cosmetology schools all have the same curriculum however some are more well known for either hair or skincare and here's an example at Paul Mitchell we did not do pedicures on the public. To get our pedicure you know hours in like we have mpas they're called it stands for minimal practical applications and it's like what you have to turn into the state to make sure that you you know did your hours doing those specific things and so for us when we did pedicures we just did them on each other and at another school in michigan that i know of that's pretty popular they do pedicures on the public because they're more of a spa so just looking into those things like those things can be a little bit different when you are picking a school Number five is to become a cosmetologist. You need 1400 to 1600 hours of schooling. That just depends on your state. Like in Michigan, we do, we need 1500 hours and I actually took an extra 100 hours for makeup. So I have 1600 hours, but mostly the national average falls between 1400 and 1600. You can go full-time, part-time, or even some schools offer part-time at night. So if you have a full-time job, you can then go to school in the evening time. If you do go full-time, it will feel like a full-time job. It is 40 hours a week, and then you have to study on top of that. It's not very much studying, like let's say a college class, but you do have tests every week um, just regarding you know, theory and ethics and sanitation, stuff like that. 
Uh, so you do have to study somewhat for that and you might have homework once in a while. That's just something to keep in mind. If you need to work, then it is a lot to do a 40 hour school week plus studying plus a job. I was so fortunate to not have to have a job when I was in cosmetology school. So I went full time, but if you need to have a job, I would totally recommend going part-time to ensure that you're not burning yourself out. The sixth thing that I want you to know before going to cosmetology school is that you will not get a lot of customers unless you really work at it or you have friends and family in the area. Now that's something that I was asking schools when I went to visit them and they all, you know, were saying how much they try to get customers in and they were confident that we would be hand doing hands-on things on live real people, but that is just not the case all the time. You really have to work at it either on social media, posting your befores and your afters, showing your work to bring people in, or you have to have people requesting you. Maybe your friends and family are in the area. Maybe someone saw you on Instagram because at school they rotate between people. And there were a lot of people at my school. I went to the largest cosmetology school in Michigan. And so by the time they rotated through everyone, I mean, you maybe got a real customer like once every three weeks. It was definitely not easy for me because I lived two and a half hours away from my hometown and so my mom and my grandma my mother-in-law they would come down and like see me and get their hair done but not a lot of people did that so I would have to you know go through the rotation of people a lot of people do not go to schools because obviously you're a beginner they don't want their hair to be messed up they don't want their hair fried off and yes there are teachers there that help us so it's definitely a big myth that like students can't do it right but a lot of people are just too afraid to go to cosmetology schools to get their hair done so even if that school gets more than other schools it's not going to be even close to a real salon experience number seven is that you will not make friends like college at least i didn't and i don't think a lot of people did because you're not living in dorms together and a lot of people go to local schools and so they have their own friends and family I went to a school far away and so I didn't really have anyone, um, but you're not living with them. So you're not really hanging out outside of school. Yes, sometimes we did. I did have one friend that we hung out quite a bit, but it's not anything like college where you're, you know, living together or you're down the hall. You literally live in different places and everyone has their own lives. Other than that, like there's people of all ages. So maybe there's, you know, there were moms there and they're not about to hang out with an 18 year old right out of high school because they've got their families at home. And so there's just all these different ages and everyone's in different places in life. You don't really make those college friends like you know you would usually in, at a university or something. I think that one of the things is that less people move to go to cosmetology school whereas like at universities or colleges where you live on campus those people are all like you know going to this new place and they're all living together and you're, they're all becoming friends number eight is that cosmetology school can get expensive now this depends on which school you go to how well known it is you have to pay tuition of course you have to pay for your books your kit and then there are some out-of-pocket expenses like when you go take your exam to get your license that costs money and the kit for that costs money and of course if you are having to live you know in an apartment that costs money. So when you put it all together, it practically is like a year at college, depending on where you go, what your situation is, but there is financial aid available. Number nine is just like anything else, you get what you put in. You can breeze through cosmetology school pretty easily, or you can put your all in, learn as much as you can, take every opportunity. At my school, I know we had so many opportunities. We got to go to California to learn from some of the best educators. There were always stylists, salons coming in, talking to us. There were always opportunities to do things like style. In New York City, there were pageants that you could help with makeup at and hair. If you take those opportunities and really put yourself out there, start posting on social media, you will bloom, you will flower, and you can really, you know, learn so much. On the contrary, you could just go and do the bare minimum and graduate and get your license. Both people still, you know, got their license, but 
this person has so much more knowledge than the other person that did the bare minimum. Number 10 is that it's not all fluffy, like, oh, I like braiding, so I'm gonna go to school and just do French braids all day, or I like doing makeup, I'm just gonna go to cosmetology school so I can do makeup all day. You actually have to do things to meet the minimum practical applications, the MPAs that I mentioned. So if you, you know, have to do four hours of facials that month, then you have to do four hours of facials that month. If you have to do six perms, you have to do six perms. If you have to do, you know, cornrows, you have to do cornrows, manicures, pedicures, hair coloring, whatever it is that you, you can't just do what you want to do. Yes, you do have a lot of creative freedom in your spare time that you can you know, do things that you want to do, but you have to learn everything and spend hours doing everything, even if you don't like that specific thing. Like, let's say you don't like waxing, but you have to learn and you have to do it because that's what we're there to do is go to school. Number 11 is if you've always been interested in hair or nails or makeup or skincare, cosmetology school is a great way to figure out what your niche is. Now, I went to cosmetology school. I knew I'd always loved makeup and loved hair and been a girly girl. And so I wanted to go and just learn everything. And I figured out that I don't even like cutting and coloring hair. I don't like perms. I don't like relaxers. I really found out that I don't love doing hair like you would in a salon. And so that's when I started my on-site bridal styling business because I fell in love with updos and makeup and just like more of the styling. I found what I loved to do and other people, you know, would fall in love with cutting hair and coloring hair and doing, you know, full heads of highlights or fashion colors. So it is very exciting and fun to find out what you love. You can finish in less than a year if you go full time. You can actually finish, I think, in nine and a half to ten months if you really grind out out. So that's everything in today's video. I think cosmetology is a great career. There are so many options and I can even do a full video on the options and the job opportunities for cosmetologists and makeup artists. If you would like that video, comment down below or comment down below with your questions. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!